Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 25. And this is an important one because while the objective specifically says solve, compare with bigger or smaller unknown problem types, uh, really the key on this lesson is teaching our first graders how to draw the tape diagrams. Now these tape diagrams kind of come from Singapore. Oftentimes we call it the Singapore bar model. Now you got all need to know that um, in Singapore, they generally hold off until second grade before really introducing in earnest the Singapore bar model. So we are introducing it here at the end of first grade. So be easy on your kids, be easy on yourself, uh, just have fun with this, enjoy the experience, but we're not really going to expect mastery till deep into second grade. So let's get started. So this might actually help you. Uh, we've created um, the eight-step model drawing, and, and we didn't create this. It's from a book. I can't remember the book, but um, here you go. So if you want to get an actual copy of this, you can go right here, bit.ly slash word problem eight steps, and that will give you access to this document. And basically, the eight steps is uh, we're trying, we create anchor charts, we create posters in our classroom, so maybe you should consider that. Um, step one, read the entire problem. Step two, turn the question into a sentence with a space for the answer. I'll show you what that means. It's like, uh, Joey will have blank apples, all right? And so that's the, that's where you that's what that means. <laughs> um, uh, number three, determine who and what is involved in the problem. Step four, draw unit bars of equal length. Uh, you'll see me do that. Uh, step five, reread each sentence one at a time and revise the bars. Uh, we're going to see that students are going to read these sent these questions, these word problems, multiple times as they are solving the problem. It's not just a one and done. Read it once and you have everything in your head. You're going to read the question multiple times. Step six, put the question mark in the drawing. Step seven, do your work on the side, not worrying about any specific algorithm, just show the work on the side. And then lastly, fill in your answer to that sentence that you wrote way up here in step two. All right, so let's get started. So parents and teachers, I'm going to do all questions, every single question from this homework. So I'm going to go fast, knowing that you all can pause anytime you want and rewind as needed. Um, probably not totally appropriate for kids because I'm going to go fast. Um, but anyway, I'll let you guys be in charge. You guys are the pros. So here we go. It says, Julio listened to seven songs on the radio. Lee listened to three more songs than Julio. How many songs did Lee listen to? So we've got two characters, don't we? We have Julio and we have Lee. So I'm going to write that down. Julio and we have Lee. Now, um, oh, I should write the question down too. Um, how many songs did Lee listen to? So the, the sentence, the answer statement is Lee listened to blank songs. All right, there is our answer sentence with a blank. Lee listened to blank songs. And that's, uh, parents and teachers, that's a direct response to this question right there. Okay, and then... We've read, we have identified two characters, Julio and Lee, and specifically what? Who is the Julio and Lee? What? Oh, they're songs. So we've got Julio songs, and we've got Lee songs, all right? And then we're going to start by drawing both of them as identical bars, and I'm going to make this as identical as possible, all right? So we're always going to start with identical bars, and now we're going to go back and read the question. It says, Julio listened to seven songs, Lee listened to three more songs than Julio. How many songs did Lee listen to? So the first thing is, who is supposed to have the longer tape diagram, Julio or Lee? 
And we want kids to recognize, oh wait, Lee listened to three more songs than Julio. So Lee, his tape diagram or her tape diagram needs to be a little bit longer than Julio's. And so I'm just going to arbitrarily make it that long. It, it doesn't have to be specific uh, in proportion, right? And when we go back and read it, it says Julio listened to seven songs on the radio. So we know that this right here is a seven, which means this is also a seven because we drew them to be the exact same length. And then it says Lee listened to three more songs than Julio. So this piece right here is a three. And now we can answer the question. It says, how many songs did Lee listen to? So the big thing is we want to know this whole piece right here, this whole thing. Now, parents and teachers, if you want, you don't have to do these brackets. You can write the numbers directly inside the tape right there. You could put a 7, a 7, and a 3. And then the only bar you have out here is, in this case, the total. And so we would say, all right, well, here's our question mark right there. So we know that 7 plus 3 is 10. So we know that Lee listened to 10 songs. So parents and teachers, I kind of slowly walked us through those eight steps. I may have not been totally perfect because I'm doing those eight steps from memory, but you get the idea. So create that anchor chart for your um, eight steps to solving word problems, and then guide your students through each of those steps. All right, here we've got Shanika caught 14 ladybugs. She caught four more ladybugs than Willie. How many ladybugs did Willie catch? So we're going to put Willie caught blank ladybugs. There's our question statement. And we've got two characters. We've got Shanika and we've got Willie. And we've got ladybugs. So it's Shanika's ladybugs and Willie's ladybugs. And we're going to start by giving them both identical tape diagrams. We're going to go back and read the question. Shanika caught 14 ladybugs. So this bar right here represents 14. That means this bar must also represent 14 because they were identical bars. Then it says she, meaning Shanika, caught four more ladybugs than Willie. So whose tape diagram is supposed to be longer? Well, Shanika's is supposed to be longer, so I'm just going to make it longer. And it's supposed to be longer by four. So those, that additional tape represents four ladybugs. So the question is, how many ladybugs did Lily catch? So Shanika caught 14 ladybugs. Ooh, look at that. Did you see what I did? So this is wrong. Shanika caught 14 ladybugs. She caught four more ladybugs than Willie. So how many ladybugs? So this whole thing is supposed to represent 14 now, isn't it? This whole thing is supposed to represent 14, which really means this part of the bar represents 10, which means this part of the bar represents 10. Hmm. So, and how did we get 10? Well, we did 14 minus 4 is 10, and so the both bars is 10. That's really interesting. So Willie caught 10 ladybugs. Hmm. I'm kind of wondering if perhaps we might have done it a different way. Shanika, Willie, and we've got Shanika and Willie. And then go back, and it says, Shanika caught 14. She caught four more ladybugs than Willie. So the idea might be, we could say Shanika caught 14, which is four more. So that might mean we cross off four from Willie. And so here's our question mark. And we know that, well, this whole thing started out as 14 because the bars were identical. And then 14 minus 4 is 10, 
And so that's how we got 10. So we got a couple of different ways. So here's the big thing I want you to notice, parents and teachers. Was I totally consistent? Am I totally sure of the, and I'm going to put in quotes, the right way to do this? No way. So parents and teachers, the idea is to begin the process of helping our students model the problem. There is no one model that is perfect. Um, there's, In fact, I just drew two separate models for the same problem. Enjoy the ambivalence, <laughs> the ambiguity. Enjoy the, um, the, the variety that's going to happen. Just have fun learning how to use tape diagrams to model first grade problems. So we're going to go a little bit faster here. So we're just going to say, okay, Rose, we've got Rose right here and her sister. So we've got Rose and we've got her sister. We're going to begin by giving them both same length of tape diagrams. She packed three more boxes than her sister to move to their new house. Her sister packed 11 boxes. How many boxes did Rose pack? So this sister right here represents 11. So we know that this piece is 11, so that means this piece is 11. But Rose packed three more boxes than her sister, so we're going to make her tape diagram a little bit longer by three. So how many ro uh, boxes did Rosie pack? Well, that's 11 plus three, which is 14, all right? So there is your tape diagram. All right, as I promised, we're moving faster now. <laughs> so uh, Tamara decorated 13 cookies. Tamara decorated two fewer cookies than Emmy. So we have two characters. We've got Tamara and we've got Emmy. And I'm going to give them both a tape diagram, same length. Then we're going to go back and read the question. So Tamara decorated 13 cookies. So this tape right here represents 13. And that means this represents 13, but it says Tamara decorated two fewer cookies than Emmy. So whose tape is supposed to be longer, Tamara's or Emmy's? Well, Emmy's is supposed to be longer. So we're going to add on a little bit. And we know that this length is supposed to be two. So how many M cookies did Emmy decorate? So Emmy decorated 13 plus 2, which is 15 cookies. Now, parents and teachers, you're noticing I'm leaving out that step two, which is write your answer sentence with a blank. Um, really, I'm focusing on the tape diagram for the adults, parents and teachers. I'm going to rely on your expertise to make this come alive and be specific with uh, your first graders. Okay, we're going to zoom Zoom quickly on this. So it says Rose's brother hit 12 tennis balls. Rose hit six fewer tennis balls than her brother. How many tennis balls did Rose hit? So we've got two characters, don't we? We have um, Rose and we have brother. And I'm going to start with both of those tapes being identical. And then it says Rose's brother hit 12 tennis balls. So we know this length right here represents... 12, right there, represents a 12. Rose hit six fewer tennis balls than her brother. Now, whose tape diagram is longer? The brother, and that means Rose's is shorter, Says because it says Rose hit six fewer tennis balls than her brother. So that means we need to kind of cross off six tennis balls. Now, we remember we started off with 12, because these two tapes were the exact same length, but then Rose's tape got shorter by six. Now the question is, how many tennis balls did Rose hit? So that means that's the question mark right here. So right there is our question. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do 12 minus six to get six. So Rose hit six tennis balls. And the last problem, so with his camera, Darnell took five more pictures than Kiana. So we've got two characters. We've got Darnell and we've got Kiana, and we're going to make them their tape diagram, their tapes, 
same lengths. Then it says, Darnell took five more pictures than Kiana. He took 13 pictures. So we know that Darnell's tape right here represents 13, which means this whole thing is 13. But it says that Darnell took five more pictures than Kiana. So whose tape is supposed to be longer and whose is supposed to be shorter? Well, Kiana's is supposed to be shorter, isn't it? By five. So we know that we need to cross off five. Now, did I really cross off? Oh, yeah, I did. I kind of crossed off. So this is indicating that Kiana's is shorter than Darnell's by five. And then the question is, what is this length right here? Because we want to know how many pictures did Kiana take. So 13 minus 5 equals 8. Now, it's possible instead of crossing off Kiana's tape, we could have extended Darnell's tape. And the, the picture would have looked a little bit different, but of course the answer would have been the same. So parents and teachers, enjoy the, the variety that you're going to get to experience. The key is helping our students understand the problems as they're trying to model them. The focus is not trying to get the right answer. The focus is modeling <laughs> the picture, modeling the problem, because the answer is going to come to its uh, come together. It always will. Um, it's the key is how, helping our students model the problems so that word problems are not such an ugly, scary bugaboo. And that wraps up first grade module six, lesson 25, super important, using tape diagrams to model a whole bunch of word problems.